for inspiration. When her gaze lingers on the well, she makes up her mind. She fishes a coin out of her pocket and holds it up. On behalf of all those who don't have access to clean water, says the redhead, tossing the coin in the well, I wish that everyone in the world could have something to drink. Okay, and the brunette nods appreciatively. I like that, very altruistic. <coughs> I think I'll wish for something a little more concrete, though. Right? She gets out a coin, tosses it in after the redheads. I wish that the three of us knew what we can do to help those who need something to drink. The blonde perks up and says, that's incredible, she says. I just figured out what, uh, what I want to wish for. She reaches into her purse, pulls out a coin. I wish this well was small enough that I could pick it up and hold it. <laughs> right? She tosses it into the well, and the other two look at her baffled expressions. Then poof! In a flash of light, the well's transformed. It becomes a dollhouse-sized replica of itself. Tiny bucket and a crank, and the blonde picks it up and says, Whoa, uh, says the brunette. Uh, what, do you suppose our wishes came true, too? Well, of course they did, the blonde cries. She begins moving the well vigorously through the air back and forth. How are you sure? And also, what are you doing? The blonde, grinning, tosses the little well aside, reaches in her purse and says, Look, pulling out a plastic bottle of what looks like a fruit smoothie. She unscrews the top, takes a drink. If it weren't for you two, she said, holding on the bottle, I never would have known how to open this. See, it says shake well before opening. Oh. 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 Okay, I didn't vet this joke. I didn't know where it was going. That's I was a, it'd be going somewhere. <laughs> that's a platinum. Oh, okay. That's not just a blonde joke. That's a platinum blonde joke. Uh, that's a pretty good one, though. So that's the that's the first original one I've heard in quite a while. Actually, was, I like that. Shake was, the well before opening. It was, I like that. Okay. was visualizing. That. Yeah. Now here's a joke. Um, right. Uh, I love clean jokes. Once in a while, these these kids come up with jokes, and they're just adorable. I love these. This one was uh, invented by a six year old. And it was, why does a duck have feathers? Why does a duck have feathers? To cover its butt quack. That's cute. All right, here's the, a guy's laying in a hospital bed. He's wired up to drips and monitors. He's breathing with the aid of an oxygen mask. A young lady comes around the ward with tea and newspaper with the tea and newspaper trolley. I imagine this is probably a joke from England because we don't get that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quite right. Yeah, oh, tea and newspaper trolley. This is a British joke. How can you tell? Well, there's a cigarette here, and they call it fags. Oh, no, this is a joke about homosexuals. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, the, the lady's running around with a tea and newspaper trolley. She's approaching him. He says, is there anything you want for, from the trolley? And the guy says, are my testicles black? And Lisa says, I'm sorry, I'm not medical staff. I can't help you with that, she says. Oh, please look for me. I'm really worried. Are my testicles black? <laughs> While taking a, a pity upon the obvious distress, the girl glances around the ward, seeing there's no medical staff around, and says, okay, I'll have a look for you. Pulls back the bed cover, lifts his cock out of the way, cupping the balls in her hands and tells him, with a note of relief, from, nope, they look fine to me. Patience pulls off his oxygen mask, and he said, and he goes, no, I said, are my test results back? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I got some jokes for you. Here's one. Um, as a male, if a girl gets an undressed in front of you, she's either interested in you or you're like level 100 in the friend zone. <laughs> <laughs> either that or she hasn't spotted you in the tree yet. <laughs> Hanging upside down. Yeah. Uh, Hammer right side up. Yeah. <laughs> you can take a photo upside down, just flip it around when you when you process exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, no problem. By the way, does anyone notice that most of the uh, the the campy comedies that we grew up with in the seventies and eighties today, that's basically rape. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if you think about it, like the Revenge of the Nerds. Remember when one of the nerds had sex with a girl while she thought that he was somebody else because he was wearing a disguise? Stop. And I'm saying. Yeah, you can't make that comedy today, can you? Then again, there's a lot of yeah. There's a lot of things you can't make in the past. Like, did anybody watch the original Bad News Bears with Walter Matthau? Of course. Like a drunk with a swearing eight-year-old child who's incredibly racist. You know? <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I think that's funny as hell. But there's no way yeah. Disney's gonna pick that one up. Mm. Yeah, you know? I love it. Anyway, here's one. Here's a dirty joke involving kid stuff, right? Two dwarfs. 
You know the seven dwarves, of course, right? Mm -hmm. Anyone here can name all of them. Of There's course happy, I can. Dopey, sleazy, <laughs> drunken. Oh, <laughs> uh, we didn't say yeah, the dirty dwarves. We said the seven dwarves. Let's uh, see. Okay. That boy. No. <laughs> all right. Well, here's a joke. This is about two dwarves. It's grumpy and happy. They went to the Vatican to meet the Pope. Ah, huh. right. And grumpy seems a little worried, and he keeps asking the pawn of questions about the church, and in particular, nuns. Hmm. Your Holiness, do you have any really short nuns? And the Pope thinks about it. He said, "No, they're all at least five feet tall." And 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 uh, Grumpy goes, "Are you sure? I mean, you wouldn't have any nuns that are say about you know my height. Like you don't have any dwarf nuns." And the Pope thinks about it. And he said, "I've never seen one. I'm afraid not. Why do you ask?" And Grumpy says, "Well, no reason." And then he comes back. And says, are you positive? Nobody in a habit. About three feet tall, two and a half feet tall, maybe. Pope says, <laughs> if I ever saw something like that, I'd be darn sure I would remember it. Right? <laughs> okay, and Graham says, okay. Well, he looks dejected at the news, and the Pope wonders why. He listens to the dwarfs as they leave the building, right? And the happy asks, what did he say? What did he say? And Grumpy says, they don't have any. And finally, happy starts <laughs> shouting, Grumpy fuck the penguin. Grumpy fuck the penguin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> penguin bomb. Oh. I got some good news for you. Do you know where you could still get gas for a dollar forty nine? <laughs> Taco Bell. No. <laughs> Taco Bell. Yeah, oh, you didn't say what kind place. of gas? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what else we got here? I got. Um, oh, here's one. Um, now, everyone heard about, of course, Canada. We've been legalizing weed, right? Uh -huh. But mm -hmm. that sort of came at a price because what happens is, is that law enforcement's going completely mental pulling people over, thinking that all of Canada is suddenly going to drive stoned all of a sudden or something like that, right? So there's a great deal of hysteria over that. And I got pulled over the other day by the police. By the way, I haven't bought any weed yet because of all, I told you, out of all the provinces, I live in the one stupid-ass province that doesn't have any stores. Mm. <laughs> I have to, yeah, I have to order by mail. And by the way, we just got a mail strike. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Great timing there. Yeah. Anyway. Jones so, I got, so there's no way, yeah, no way am I going to have any weed on me now. It's just not happening. Mm. But anyway, I got pulled over the cops, and I'm a little bit nervous, a little flustered, and this policeman, right, yeah, uh, the policeman thinks, of course, that I'm under the influence. Like, this is a spot check, right? And they give me a breathalyzer test, which I passed, no problem, because I haven't been doing anything, right? But he's still, he's kind of, he's not convinced. You know, like, I'm, you know, I'm like a guy r running around with a bass guitar in my back of my car, you know, with Jimi Hendrix bumper stickers, and he's thinking, yeah, you know, let's, let's profile this guy, mm -hmm. right? Right? And then he called the sniffer dog in, Right? And he takes a good snip inside my vehicle, and the guy and the cop goes, "Looks here, son. This dog's telling me you got drugs on you." And I said, "Do you think I'm on drugs? You're the one with the talking dog." <laughs> <laughs> what are you, comedian? Well, <laughs> you know, kinda. Rut row. Yeah. Rut row. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, so I invited him to the show. I was like, "Hey, why don't you come in here?" <laughs> okay, here's one. Um, Having sex is like playing bridge. If you don't have a good partner, you better have a good hand. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, geez, that's pretty bad. All right. Yeah.